Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and I've had some interest lately in continuing our series on user library ensembles. So today I'm going to do a video on uh, the latest ensemble to catch my eye called Grip by Uwe Honig. Uh, if you like this tutorial, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with new reactor content once a week. And uh, just to begin with, let's do a quick sound sample. There's a few sounds I designed with Grip. So we can get some great soundscapes and also some really good glitchy stuff. So the author of this ensemble is the same person who made Travelizer, which you can find in the Reactor Factory library. And both ensembles are based around grain cloud samplers. So the grain sampler itself is located at the top of the ensemble here. And in order to control it, we have a whole bunch of uh, parameters um, starting right here, comprising this entire area of the interface, um, are controls that directly affect the grain cloud module. Uh, directly to the right, we have some effects to uh, process the sound once it's coming out of the grain cloud. Uh, beneath that, we have a bunch of modulators, and I'll show you how to use these in a bit. And at the very bottom, on the right-hand side, we have a master echo effect and volume area. Uh, three parameters that can be um, mapped to MIDI and then used as modulators for any parameter in the ensemble. And on the left hand, we have some uh, more master controls. So this is a really huge ensemble, and I'm not going to have time to cover every aspect of it individually, but I'll show you how to work the grain cloud controls and how to set up the modulators. And um, the rest should be pretty self-explanatory, the filter and the reverb and all that is pretty simple. So the grain cloud has a sample map embedded in it um, and you can choose which sample is being played using the sample knob here. And you'll notice that the sample map included with GRIP is kind of incomplete. I think there's only 20, 21 samples with it. So if you want to add your own samples, turn on the sample map editor in the upper right hand corner here. And you can add samples to the sample map by using the Add button in the lower left-hand corner. Um, simply press the Add button, um, choose a sample to add, and it'll load up. It should load up automatically um, using the correct parameters, just to be next in line on your list. So. Here I've just loaded in sample um, for key 21. You can also just load in entire sample maps from other ensembles, which is something that I like to do a lot. Um, so I saved the sample map for Ultraloop, and using the import button, I can just load in that entire sample map. So now that we can load our own samples, let's take a look at the modulation network, which makes up the bulk of this ensemble. So each parameter controlling part of the grain cloud module has its own um, modulator receivers. And these are generally located um, directly below or directly to the right of the given knob. So the sample knob, for example, has three modulator receivers directly beneath it. Now let's set one up to see how they work. The first drop-down menu is the modulator that we want to receive. 
So we can control, uh, we can use the incoming velocity, incoming note pitch, um, LFOs, various envelopes from around the ensemble, and a lot of other stuff. Um, we have two ways to control the amplitude of the incoming modulator. The first is this little uh, numeric readout over here that we can either use as a knob by dragging up or down, or just hit enter and uh, type in the value you want. And then directly beneath the modulator menu, we have another menu that acts um, kind of as an envelope for our incoming modulator, so the two values get multiplied together. So you here you can add another envelope or another LFO to control the amplitude of your incoming um, modulator. Um, the on option just sets the modulator to always have full amplitude. So let's just use that because it's really easy. And finally, each modulator has a little switch um, that needs to be on in order for it to be active. So the sample knob has three modulators, like I said, and the outputs of all of them get added together. So you can have up to three different modulators affecting the sample. And there are some further controls associated with the modulation network. Um, so we have the time quantize menu, and this just slows down the modulators um, to a given rate. So if we set it to a quarter note, we're going to get a new value from our incoming LFO every quarter note. And we also have these little inertia knobs and faders. And these basically act um, to slow down the rate of change for a given knob. Um, and you can see this easiest um, using the distance knob. If we turn inertia, inertia all the way up and we change the knob, we see that our value doesn't really even change at all. Um, and by lowering the inertia, um, we're speeding up the rate of change when we swing the knob. So if we turn inertia uh, all the way down, we'll see that the uh, values change much quicker. So there are also little faders associated with the modulation network that can control the inertia of certain incoming modulators. An example is in the pitch section right here. We have two modulators that are controlled by an inertia uh, fader and another modulator that is affected by a time quantize menu. So a pretty um, in-depth and creative modulation network here, which is great because um, the cloud modules are really interesting, but if you're not having a lot of dynamic controlling of the parameters, um, they can be kind of boring, so this is uh, just a really great way to make them very dynamic and interesting. So a lot of people are really confused by grain clouds, um, builders and end users alike because they're pretty confusing and they have a lot of inputs and it's just easy to be overwhelmed. But we basically have um, what I would call six parameters that are really important here. So we went over the sample controller, which controls which sample we're using. I feel like the pitch is pretty self-explanatory. It's just um, pitching the sound that we're playing back up or down. Uh, we have the position knob here, which controls when we create a new grain, um, where the playback is going to start in the sample. And we have the length knob, which controls the length of a new grain. 
and the distance knob which controls how far apart grains are spaced in time. So these work together in an interesting way. If you have a length that is longer than the distance, larger than the distance, then the uh, grain cloud will play more than one grain at a time. So if you create a really long length and a really small distance, you can get it so you have a bunch of grains playing at once and kind of get these big whooshing sound effects type sounds. And if you have the distance set larger than the length, then you'll only be playing one grain at a time, and you can kind of get these really thin, sparsely um, spread out sounds, kind of like the glitch example that I was playing earlier. And finally, we have the pitch slide, which controls um, whether or not the pitch will slide up or down um, while a grain is playing, and this can create some really great effects as well. Uh, we also have the pitch jitter, position jitter, length jitter, and distance jitter, um, which kind of add to the complexity of the grain module by overwhelming a lot of people, but all they really do is add a small random value to their respective parameters um, on a new grain beginning. Alright, so let's turn this boring initialized sound into something interesting. I'm going to start by adding some randomness to the position of our new grains. And I'm going to turn up the grain length and the distance as well. Just a little bit. Turn the distance up a lot. And let's have it slide up in pitch by an octave. And let's add something a little more interesting for the sample. Um, so we can get some kind of more randomness out of it. There's an area up here where you can draw a modulation curve. So I'm just going to draw in something and we can assign it to our sample. Um, turn the modulation on. Uh, let's have it change by not 127 samples, by, but by a bunch. So now we're getting some pretty fun sounds. I'm going to try to get the distance to just about match the length so we can get some uh, kind of cool sounds that way. And let's turn up the sustain on the envelope so we can get some more sustained sounds. And I'm going to add some randomness to the pitch slide as well. So I'm just going to use the second random, um, give it a uh, total range of, um, let's say, 24. So now we're going to have a value from anywhere from negative 24 to positive 24 coming into our pitch slide. And let's just add in a little bit of jitter for fun. So yeah, I really like the sounds you can get out of this. Um, it's really easy to program once you um, take a little bit of time to figure out what's going on. Um, there's also a little bit more information about uh, what's going on if you look at the B panel of the synth. 
All right, so once again, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please check out our website. Um, if you guys have anything you'd like to see as a tutorial in the future, or any uh, user library ensembles that you'd want to uh, have highlighted, uh, just let us know. And I'll be back next week with a new tutorial.